Welcome to the GCN Technology Show. Coming up this week, we've got Sebastian Vettel's new bike, oversized pulley wheels, a new power meter, wheels to raise money for charity, and some tyres made from cream. Cream? Yeah. We'll also be discussing how Tadej Bocaccio has become the first winner of the Tour de France on disc brakes. Oh, he didn't though, did he? Yeah, he did. Oh, he didn't. First up, let's take a look at Free last in. week's poll. Um, so last week we had two polls, didn't we? Because we were missing out from the previous week. So we asked what you thought of the new Oakley Catos now that Cav has been winning in them. Has, uh, have Cav they become cooler? Yeah, well they have become cooler. So 41% of viewers voted for hot, 59% not. So it hasn't swung the vote. Still not cool enough. But apparently not cool enough. Um, mm. And the other poll we had was what everyone thought of Richard Branson's custom trek. 55% said hot, 45% not. So not really a clear, yeah, not clear really one. Clear. Also, controversy oh. on, on Richard Branson's track. Apparently, he didn't actually ride it. Really? Apparently. I it was could all not possibly imagine that someone would stage anything. Yeah. Hmm. Ridiculous. Anyway, on to our main talking point, where you seem to think that Tadej Pogaccia is the first rider to win the Tour de France using disc brakes. However... I disagree, because well, look, clearly the, the, tour, didn't. the tour is over, we're all a bit sad about that, but this year's result, massively significant, because it is the first Tour de France to be won on disc brakes. He didn't though, did he? Because on some of the clear, like the mountain stages, the key ones, he was using rim brakes, and on his time trial bike he has rim brakes as well. Although, I'll give it to you that Colnago didn't actually make a time trial bike with uh, disc brakes yet. So. Yes, but... The stage that he won the most time, got right, stage eight, yeah. took 3.25 out of his GC rivals, was in the rain in the Alps in France. He was on disc brakes. <sighs> but that's just one example. Yeah, but you agree that he won, Tade Pogaccia won the Tour de France. Technically, yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that. Do you agree that Tade Pogaccia did use disc brakes? Yes, yeah, I agree with that. Do, do you agree that Tade Pogaccia crossed the finish line in Paris? Using disc brakes. Yeah, but you're missing out. Ergo, significant. Case you're missing out. Case significant. Tadej Pogacar won the Tour de France using disc brakes. That's the end of this week's show. See you next week. It's not. I've got a lot more to come about this. Well, the reality is that he actually won on both rim brakes and disc brakes using the advantages of each system. And we understand that Tadej Pogacar is actually a little bit of a weight weenie and is really into the setup of his bike. Yeah, I think it's really cool that he does see the advantages and disadvantages yeah. of both systems. Yeah. But we, we reached out to Colnago to find out some more information about Pogacar's setup and, and his bikes. And they sent us some information on it. And broadly speaking, he used three different bike configurations during the tour, all built around his V3 RS frame set. Um, and these are as follows. So his first setup is with disc brakes and tubeless wheels. They're the Bora Ultra WTO wheels that we used on the Dream oh, they're Ride. Good, aren't they? Yeah, yeah like really this. nice mm. wheels. He uses that on flat and rolling terrain. Mm -hmm. Then on hillier terrain and mountainous stages that don't finish with a summit finish, such as stage eight, where he took most of the time that, that won him the Tour de France, three minutes, 25 seconds over his rivals. Um, he uses disc brakes again, but switches the wheels out to make the bike a bit lighter and uses tubs. So he uses the 50mm Bora 1s. As opposed to the 35s. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. But then he has his third bike setup, arguably what I think is the bike they won the Tour de France on. So that uses rim brakes, and then it still uses the Campag Bora Ultra wheels, the 50mm ones, but these are tubular, not mm. tubeless. And he uses this bike for mountain top finishes, so summit finishes, such as on the Col de Porte. Yes, but he did ride the majority of the tour and the majority of the stages on disc brakes. But he finished at the top of the mountains on the rim brake bike. Crossed the finish line on disc brakes. Yeah, we all know I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. The interesting thing here is that Pogaccia could ride whatever he wants. He could ride rim brakes throughout the entire race and Colnago would, would be fine by that. They just want him on a Colnago. But he's deliberately choosing disc brakes and this is because it's not all about weight. If you put the 35mm lighter wheels in the disc brake bike, it, it, it's pretty, pretty darn close to, uh, to 6.8 uh, kilograms. But 
we we understand that he's deliberately choosing disc brakes, particularly that stage eight with with the descent in the wet was was a key example because he wanted the superior braking power as it was it wasn't a summit finish and so weight's less important you know and that and he wanted that that, that key braking power to to make sure he had a, an advantage over his rivals. But what about mountain top finishes? So summit finishes where you could argue that if you were to suffer a puncture, a disc brake wheel change is slower than what a rim brake one is. Mm. So arguably, the rim brake is gonna save you more time if you were to suffer a puncture or have some sort of mechanical problem. Yeah. Whereas on a rolling sort of flatter stage, it's not quite such an issue, is it? So I guess it kind of boils down to the stage and the race tactics yeah. a little bit. So it's like, it's almost not down to as much weight. There's other considerations playing in. Like you say, yeah. that is a reason why he's used rim brakes on those summit finishes. Colnago also provided Tale Pogaccia with a handful of little sort of trick and unique parts ready for the Tour de France. Because like we said, he is a bit of a weight weenie and is really into the setup of his bike. So some of the parts that they've swapped out are to try and save weight, aren't they? In order to help him, be able to use those 50 millimeter wheels that he likes. Yeah, so instead of using 35s, it means he can use 50s and still have a bike that's 6.8. Proper cool, these mods, check these out. So instead of his normal cockpit setup, he's using the Dada Alanera Light version, which saves 45 grams. Yeah, that's cool. And his seat post has special screws on it that um, we understand they're a, a special alloy of steel yeah. that's lighter than titanium. It's got apparently. to be so special, yeah. isn't it? it? Yeah, it saves 75 grams. God, the next one on the list, I really like this. So his race number holder, arguably an incredibly light component anyway, is um, only one grams. Like, that saves seven grams off the bike. Yeah, we've got a picture of that as well on the scales at Colnago HQ. Look at that, ridiculous. Um, and then save weight on the through axles as well. This yeah. is an area where we've seen quite a few brands. Well, only on his disc brake bike. Yeah, on, yeah, only on his disc brake bike. But yeah, through axles, 17 grams saved there with lighter ones. Final, final upgrade is a full titanium screw set for his bike. So every sort of nut, bolt, screw upgraded to titanium. And that is saving 45 grams. That's more than I was expecting, It's actually. proper cool weight yeah. stuff, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. I love that he's into this. Oh, it's good. It means his bike always, well, not always, but he's weighing in right on the limit of the 6.8 UCI weight limit. But the big benefit is that he can use the deeper, slightly heavier wheels to provide an aerodynamic advantage. Mm. I like that. I like that. Yeah. That, he's, that he's, he's switched on to how important aero is. It's cool. Mm. So there you have it. Tadej Pogacar won the tour. Did use rim brakes a little bit, but for most of the tour, he used disc brakes. So he won the tour on disc brakes. Oh, he did on there, did he? I completely disagree. Well, we're going to disagree, but I think this is the perfect time to have a poll. So you can, you can let us know what you think. Vote uh, by clicking down below. Did Tadej Pogacar win the tour on disc brakes or rim brakes or both? And um, let us know in the comments too. I'm intrigued to hear what people have to say. Please agree with me. Mainly on disc brakes, wasn't it? Rim brakes. He, he would have won on disc brakes if he'd used them, I reckon, the entire tour. Oh, I'm done with this. It's now time for Hot Tech, and starting this week, we've got the Hunt Wheels that are raising money for the Quebecer charity. So Hunt sponsor the Quebecer Next Hash team with their wheels, and they've provided them with some special edition ones for the final stage where the riders rode onto the Champs-Élysées. They're rather cool these, don't they? They are rather cool, so they've got a big Quebecer logo on them. And um, so these wheels are going to be sold off, and all the profits from them are going to go to the Quebec Foundation, which is pretty cool, isn't it? That's nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And also... A worthy cause. It is a worthy cause, and also one of the wheels are going to be raffled off, so anyone could be in with a chance of winning one. Hmm. Next up, we've got a rather cool custom bike. Sebastian Vettel, Formula One uh, driver, is spotted with this in the pits at the Silverstone Grand Prix. God, it's cool, isn't it? This is a JRI Fixie bike, so it stands for Just Ride It. I think it's an Australian brand, and this is a custom painted bike, and it's in fact the fourth bike he's had from this company. Nice. Hmm. Well, it's got a custom paint job that's inspired by the legendary Audi Quattro rally cars yeah. from the 80s. So, you what know, engine did these Blumpers. have as well? Oh, well, I'm a big fan of the. Of, of I the knew old, you'd the know old this. Quattros. Yeah. 2.1 litre inline five. And beautiful one, two, four, five, three firing all of the cylinders gives it this sort of really nice, distinctive, How do you know warbling this stuff? engine sound. Oh. Got some pretty weird wheels though, haven't they? They do have an interesting name. Can you remember what they're called? Um, Vettel's got his hands on a pair of stiffies. 
yeah, interesting. Well, anyway, interesting choice of name. But something cool that I did spot is that he has got Pirelli tyres on him. So yes. same tyres as his Formula 1 car. Mm. Mm, pretty cool. Pirelli's on his stiffies. Mm. Next up, we've got these tyres. At the start of the show, I did promise you some tyres made from cream. You did. And unfortunately, it's fake news. I haven't got any tyres that are made from cream. So last year, around the Tour de France, Continental launched the cream, cream coloured sidewalls on their GP 5000 tyres. They were limited edition. They sold out real quick. But this year, they've bought them back and apparently... They're here to stay. So these are available in a 25 and a 28 millimeter width, and you can just get some cool colored cream sidewalls. I do you like? I do mm. like a, a cream or tan sidewall. Oh, you yeah. look smart. Well, they do both, the cream and the tan, so slightly different color. Mm. There you go. Well, sticking with tires, uh, check out these. These are called thick slicks. We've spotted these on quite a few bike vault submissions. God, they're cool, aren't they? Yeah, and what really makes them stand out is the massive sort of writing on the side of the tyre, the really big logo. And as well as being available in black, you can get them in white. I mean, white tyres, how cool is that? that? Probably yeah. cool. And the idea behind these tyres, they're not a performance road tyre, they're aimed at kind of urban use, so they've got loads of puncture protection built yeah. in uh, to make them very practical. This does mean that they're a bit heavier, but they're not aimed at performance. Uh, so it's 500 grams for a, a 28 millimeter one, but I, yeah, I think they look. I really think cool. they look cool, don't they? Yeah, definitely probably. an urban sort of fixie bike style. Hmm. Right, then next, I wasn't really sure whether to include this in Hot Tech or not, but I'm going to include it anyway. Basically, I've seen a number of articles online effectively suggesting that people think Tadej Pogacar was cheating in the Tour de France. And I mean, is, yeah, I mean, it's incredible to hear. I've seen quite a few articles about it, but effectively there's been a number of anonymous riders saying that they've heard strange noises from Tadej Pogacar's back wheel, um, obviously suggesting that they think he has a motor in there, which I kind of disagree with. Yeah, saying that yeah. there were strange metallic noises. I've got the over. quote here, actually. So hit, the, hit, the, hit us with it. I'll hit you with the statement. So a small part of it says, there is a strange noise. I can hear it while riding. It comes from the rear wheels, a strange metallic noise. Sounds like a badly adjusted chain. I've never heard that anywhere. Right, why, why, why is this person anonymous? Why aren't they like going? <laughs> I don't know. They, I mean, that's bad. Like, yeah. they need to just, if you really do believe that, you need to just go. And then, if you'd say, Hi, I, I heard this, I thought he was doing that, then the easiest thing in the world to check for, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, personally, you just say, oh, it's a no for Judges, me. You, ju Tour de France judges, please go and check his bike at the end of today's stage. I, I think they noises. actually, you, they do do that anyway. They, it's the easiest they thing in the world to check for. for. Yeah, they have the. Um, like magnetic scanners, they can x-ray bikes, they can take, take the them wheel apart, out. take the wheel out. Personally, I think it's a load of rubbish. Yeah, and how rubbish could you well. ever fit a, uh, a motor inside the hub? They're so small and slim down, aren't they? It'd be useless. Well, no, I just think, I just don't think, there's, I don't think motor doping is happening right now. Well, it's, it's a no from us then, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Next, we've got the Favero Asioma pedals. Now, these are power meter pedals, and they're not actually a brand new product out. They've had their power meter pedals out for a little while now, but what is new is that they have an axle kit available, which is compatible with Shimano pedal bodies. Mm. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's compatible with pretty much every Shimano pedal body, apart from Jure's. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a shame, but the, uh, the axle power meter system is pretty accurate, so they say it has an accuracy of plus or minus 1%, even included oval chain rings, which sometimes can throw out power uh, meters that are based on the pedal system. Yeah, power meter pedals have come a long way. They have come a long way. Like, so these feature yeah. uh, 151, that's the weight of them. So it's the weight, I'll tell you the hours. So they weigh 151 grams, and the hours of use that they have is 50 hours. Be a bit awkward getting around the wrong way, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to getting our hands on the Speedplay ones, the Wahoo Speedplay. Um, so these are very ones, $585 for a dual-sided pair. Hmm. And finally in Hot Tech this week, we've got a rather trick oversized pulley wheel system. Oh, love a good oversized pulley this wheel system. This is cool, isn't it? This one is incredibly distinctive looking though. It's from, oh, it's from Absolute Black. And well, the first thing you'll notice is that it, well, it kind of looks like a Tron bike. It does look really cool. It's those sort of colors around the edge. In fact, it's got a big hole through the middle. So the thing that makes this stand out is, well, traditionally, the cages on your derailleurs have two plates which sandwich the pulley wheels together. This, however, uses a monoplate design, so it's made from carbon fibre, and then it has the pulley wheels held on with a kind of strange lock ring 
which Holman plays using just that one plate. And then because it's got the oversized pulley wheels, it then has oversized bearings to support the load outside further rather than in that sort of central point. That's why it's got that hollow design on it. And what's the advantages of this kind of system, Alex? Oh God, I'm, I'm glad you asked me actually because I was reading up on this. So Absolute Black say it's more aerodynamic than a standard cage and they also claim it's more aerodynamic than some of the other oversized pulley wheel systems out there, but I haven't seen any data to back this up. It weighs 71 grams and the other unique feature of this is that on the top pulley wheel it has what Absolute Black are calling rubber dampers, effectively they're little rubber bands, which dampen the noise of the chain going onto the pulley wheel system to quieten it down and make it run nice and smooth. Pagacci could do with that on, <laughs> his, on his noisy could bike. Could do with that on his noisy bike. I might yeah. get accused dampen, of cheating. Dampen the noise. Dampen the noise. Um, well, that's cool, but as is befitting of oversized pulley wheel systems, it's very expensive. Uh, it says £500. Yeah, it's quite expensive, isn't it? So that's £7.00. Four pence per gram. God, you are good at maths. It's not only me that's good at the maths. Nice. Anyway, more hot tech next week. It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades. That's right, where you submit upgrades that you've made to bikes, equipment, or your cycling lives. And then uh, you do this by submitting evidence of those upgrades in the GCN app, all in a bid to win the ultimate prize a GCN water bottle or bidon. If you you sound so excited about this. Or pretentious. Um, anyway, because you're too excited, I'm going to talk the viewers through what we had last week. So last week, the upgrades were Skylord 34 GGAS Skylord. with a decked out giant TCR up against, hello, 75, and their abandoned Bianchi. 45% um, went to Skylord 34, 55% went to hello 75. So get in touch, get the water bottle sent out to you. Well, that's well done. Close fought battle. This Close week battle. we've got Bailiff Six, who's uh, well says they they just turned sixteen and done a birthday gift for themselves, and uh, they found this old Fuji Regis on Facebook Marketplace and got it for ten dollars. That's amazing! Incredible. Yeah. It was probably stolen. Uh, let's hope Hopefully it was not. <laughs> and has basically just gone out and completely kitted it out. Took it apart, repainted it, fitted new tyres, fixed the uh, derailleurs, but um, put new brakes on it and a flat bar, upgraded the headset, changed the bottom bracket, fork... I mean... It, it it's like the full works. Triggers broom, isn't yeah. it? Completely changed it. Um, it's, it's no longer the same bike. Here you go, what do you make of this? Um, it looks good. For $10, that's... The that best so bike cool. I've ever seen for ten dollars. Yeah, but look how it looks at the end. At the end, it looks even better. Wow! I know. I quite liked how it was the first time round. <laughs> it, it's, that's cool. It's a good bike. Little like suspension little, seat little, post little on there as well. Suspension seat post. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. That is a for, for nipping around town. That is that's dreamy. Also, how is that bike standing up right now? Oh, that's a very good question. Magic. Is Maybe there a it's shadow a sh stand there. It's a completely invisible shadow stand. Incredible. Anyway, it's not going to be plain sailing. It never is. I didn't say it last week, so I thought I'd get it in this week. Um, so they're up against Jason Richardson. Jason Richardson won, even. Uh, he said they wanted to do um, something to do during the first lockdown, and this is what occupied their time. So they found a fixed gear online for £40. Most of the components have been upgraded, sanded the frame down, full respray. Said they added dropouts. Like, it's quite a significant thing to add to your frame. Well, anyway. Well welded them in. Welded the dropouts in. Maybe. Brakes, pedals, new saddle. Painted everything. Painted the wheels multicolours. Yeah, that's a cool touch. I've never seen that before. I like the sort of bronzy hub thing going on there. Oh, well, yeah, actually, I like that. Yeah, that is cool. And two tone bar tape. Ah, oh, these are those tyres, the thick slicks. Thick slicks. <laughs> thick slicks. I mean, if you look before. He had some rather nice Challenge Stradas on there. Oh, it's a nice big chunky Paris Roubaix type tire. Oh. Yeah, that's, they're, they're cool. They're expensive tires. Open tubulars. Good work. Um, but yeah, he's gone swapped them out for the thick slicks. Rides around town on it. Two tone I, bar tape. And yeah, apparently he commutes on this. That's really that's really quite cool. Yeah, I, I liked it before as well. Both like, fairly um, fairly good upgrades this week, and I, I picked them out because I thought it'd be quite hard for people to decide between the two. Yeah, I like the continuation of the colour theme on the drop and onto the wheel. I see what he did there. 
Oh, oh yeah. Mm. All makes sense now. Anyway, it's not down to Ollie and I, it's down to you guys at home. So head over to the GCN app and vote on which upgrade you like the best. It's now time for the Bike Vault, where you upload pictures of your bike, Ollie and I take a look at them, and we're simple people. If we see a bike we like, we shake the bell. We do. Uh, if you want to play along at home, you can vote on all the bikes featured in the GCN app. It's completely free. And you can submit your own as well, if you'd like to try and get it into the Bike Vault. But remember, the rules of the vault. Plus, we have the final say anyway. We do. The first final up, rule, there is no rule. <laughs> first we make the rules. <laughs> right. First up this week, we have last week's most super nice bike, which was actually one that we featured in the show last week. Yeah. Pretty cool looking bike. So this is the Pinarello. Creations creation. Yeah, Pinarello F12 with that custom paint job. It's and it actually tricked had, out that though, isn't it? It had twice as many votes as second place. Hmm. Well, people clearly are liking that bike. It's very nice. Um, next, this week, our first submission from Larif. What do you make of this canyon? Oh, let me have a little look. Oh, interesting choice of picture to send in. Yeah, do you um, think that's Larif, or do you reckon it's just a random man he's got to hold his bike? It could bike? be his friend. He said, oh, oh, hold my bike, I want to get a bike roll picture. I think it's nice. Yeah, it's just a nice from me. Yeah. Sorry about that. Next up, we've got Diego Limonti. God, I did well with that one, didn't I? Not very good at mm, names normally. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> with, with a Scott Foil 20. Um, again, interesting picture. I presume it's the smaller bike in the picture, not the large bike. Uh, is that Diego there? <laughs> um, where is where is uh, where is that? I don't know. Surely it's a significant location that you would have known. I'm I'm not familiar with. That's not in. I've not. Oh, this that. this is just outside um, Bath on your way into Westbury. All oh, right. Uh, nice. It's dirty, and it's in smally smally big. Yeah, all the accessories are still on there. Yeah. You can't see if it's the valves aren't lined up. Unfortunately, no. we're not onto a good start this week. Keeg, Next one, Keeg underscore N, the Keegan. Um, he says this bike's a it's a Walty. Ooh. Oh, I like this. Got a nice, uh, good basket on the front, King but it's looking cool. Cranks. Oh. Ugh, what's going on with the cranks? We're not in Biggie Smalls. Valves not aligned. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll accept the basket because it is actually bolted Too onto the Too many infractions, it's a Too nice. Too many infractions. Next up, we've got wags.photo. Interesting username with Cervelo P Series. TT bike. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's Super a bit of a nice. jaunty angle. Super nice, yeah? God, straight in. First one of the show. No, I'm digging that. Cool, yeah. Smart. Very clean drivetrain. You eat your dinner off that. Eat, you could actually eat your dinner off it. Yeah. Uh, uh, next we've got Nearax underscore O seven with um, their Sava Hood six point zero. Also, oh Shimano one hundred and five group set of the people. Oh, nice. I like this. This is really this is cool. Very good. Very bit of a, very bit of a Euro contender. paint scheme. Very sort of I busy. am not f that familiar with it with a Sava. No, I can't I mean, say I am. I've never ridden one. No, I can't I, say that. That's super nice. Um, yeah, I'm going to go super nice. I like that. Good job. Next up, we've got Matt-H-BKK. Incredibly good username with their Creepo Mamba. Sipo. Oh, yeah. Creepo. <laughs> Where did I get an R from? <laughs> I literally don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, a Sipo even. Yeah, mm. a, a well, a well-established triathlon brand. Oh, that's why I didn't know it. Sipo, uh, Mamba. I think that's super nice. Oh, 105 groups of the people, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go super nice on that. And Tour de France has just finished as well. Yeah, I think that's a good one. That's our last one. Well, unfortunately, that's it for this week's show. Bike Vault ended strong. Oh, yeah, it did. Yes, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. And don't forget to comment down below and vote in the poll um, to agree with me that, yes, this is the first tour that's been won by disc brakes and if you'd like to get your hands on the greatest t-shirts available to humanity and caps then well you're in luck because we've got them in the GCN shop link down below and you can comment on why rim brakes are better as well and how they actually won no, the Tour de France <laughs>